Hi guys, today Ms. Noelia Tintilay and I prepared a presentation about uh, modal verbs. So we welcome you to this class about modal verbs that uh, you have in your books in unit number four. So let's deal with modal verbs. Modal verbs don't change their form. They don't use S for third person singular. Modal verbs have no infinitive or participle. Modal verbs make questions because they are also auxiliary verbs and they are never followed by the uh, preposition to. Never. They use bare infinitive. There is one exception. Ought to. Ought to takes to. Can. Can is used for ability, permission and polite requests. This is the use of can. For example, we can say... Roger Federer can play tennis very well. Or permission. Can I go to the toilet, please? Ability and permission. Uh, we use can for this. Or, for example, for request. Can I have a cup of coffee, please? You also use can in this, uh, with this meaning. Can't. Can't is for prohibition and also logical deduction. It, it is also used for logical deduction. For example, I'm going to show you some uh, pictures. For example, you can't smoke here. It is forbidden. So in this case, it is clearly used as prohibition or logical deduction. He is crying. He can't be happy. Of course, he is not happy. Then, should, shouldn't. We are going to use should and shouldn't to give advice, okay, for recommendation as well. Uh, and also for to criticize. For example, advice. You shouldn't smoke so much. You are giving advice or you should turn right to avoid this traffic jam. It's a recommendation. Okay? Uh, you are recommending to avoid traffic jam. Must. Inner obligation, firm necessity and logical conclusion or deduction. For example, I must visit a doctor. Oh, I must study hard to pass the exam. It's inner obligation, yeah? Or logical deduction. Oh, he drives a Ferrari. He must be rich. Yes, logical conclusion. This is the use of must. Mustn't. Mustn't has the same meaning of can't for prohibition, yeah? For example, you mustn't take pictures in museums. So, it has the same meaning. May and might. When you talk about a possible future event or an event that could be factual, you use may. Okay? May is more possible than might. So when it is possible, we use may. For example, classes may start next August. It's a concrete possibility. You can also use may for permission. May I go to the toilet? For example, it's more formal than can. Go. If you need to go might events that are hypothetical they are possible but very unlikely to happen we use might figuratively when the situation is not real that is another use for example she is so hungry she might eat the whole house it doesn't mean that she's going to eat the house she's starving but doesn't mean she's going to eat the house examples It might rain this evening, so it may happen. It is not that concrete because the sun is shining, but perhaps, maybe, it might rain this evening. May can also be used for deduction, yeah? Uh, when you are from 30% to 50% sure about something. For example, you say, he might be dead. You are not sure, okay? So, it's just a logical conclusion. Then could. Could can be used for ability, for request, suggestion, permission, possibility, and conditional of can. You have the examples here, but could can be used for all these uh, situations. Ability, request, suggestion, permission, possibility, and in the conditional sentences, uh, in the second conditional. I could visit many places if I had money, for example. Could we go home now for permission? Could you lend me this book? It is more formal than can for requests. 
for past ability. I could play guitar when I was a child as well. Have to. Have to is obligation, but what kind of obligation? External obligation. The subject is forced or obliged by a separate external power, that is to say, laws or rules. For example, if you see this picture, it is in an airport, so she has to pay for her excess luggage. It's an, a, a flight regulation, so she has to do it. Don't and doesn't have to is absence of obligation. When it is not necessary, okay? Uh, it is not necessary. So it's absence of obligation. Don't and doesn't have to for the third person she, uh, singular. For example, he doesn't have to work, he is rich. Absence of obligation. So he doesn't have to work. Ought to sometimes implies moral obligation. For example, you ought to be nicer to your brother. It's the only modal that takes to and it is uh, stronger than should. In, it is used to give stronger advice. Uh, sometimes, as I said before, moral obligation. So look at this picture. You ought to be nicer to your brother, okay? So it's stronger than should, but, well, it has the same uh, meaning. Thank you very much, everybody. See you soon from... Uh, greetings from Miss Noelia Tintilai. And from me, thank you very much. See you soon. Bye-bye.